Was there an Adam? Was there an Eve? Or did we evolve from what we conceived? Either way, we got what was needed When the sun shone down on the Garden of Eden Don't you know we're gonna have a solitopia, solitopia, solitopia Oh yeah, we started to burn too many things we found. That's the uh, divine Dar Williams speaking, singing with the legendary Pete Seeger and David Burns, not the Talking Heads guy who wrote that song from his uh, music shop in Beacon, New York. I am Harvey Sluggo Wasserman, back with you for another California Solar Topia show here at I am absolutely honored to be with my co-conspirators, my reason, uh, in Santa Monica, and uh, and Tatanka Bricka, the chair of the KPFK board, somewhere in the wilds up north. Um, um, Tata- uh, Maya, we want to start with our customary invitation to Oliver Stone, and we have a great, great show. We're going to start with a what we, what we like to do, which is an activist fight, and we have two great activists with us who are going to tell us about an upcoming action here in L.A. that you can participate in as you join KPFK for 25 bucks. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, Milo, what, did you run a, across Oliver Stone this week in your many, um, you know, in your active social life? I was going to ask you about that, Harvey. I know that <laughs> you've been asking him to uh, every every week for weeks and weeks now to, to debate you about nuclear power. Um, and uh, so far, as far as I know, um, we haven't heard back from him, so I'm hoping that that Oliver will will call in. Will he can? If, as a matter of fact, let me just say that this is our last show during this particular fund drive. So um, he, he can call eight one eight nine eight five five seven three five or nine eight eight one eight nine eight five KPFK to support our show and to take you up on your offer to debate him on nuclear power. And I want to thank everybody, all of our listeners for sticking with us and listening to the show. We've got a great show lined up. And if you didn't, if you, if you missed uh, the announcement that Terry Guy provided where you can find some really wonderful uh, old desks and office furniture and all kinds of CDs and books at our very last rummage sale at the studio at 3729 Huanga Boulevard West, Studio City, this Saturday. So please come by and um, and pick up some really great bargains. I'm sure... Uh, well, it's yet another uh, such a deal... Um, um, you know, <laughs> a, a, a sale for a KPFK and to talk to Tonka, we have you since it is a, a fun drive. We're going to get to Sydney, um, and, and Brenda in a minute to talk about, um, uh, our 5G and a major upcoming event. Very important to everybody. And we also, the second half hour, we're going to uh, go in and, and talk about a lot of different things. You are welcome, more than welcome to call us at 818. 818- Nine eight five five seven three five. We love hearing from our listeners. Eight one eight nine eight five KPFK. Give us a call, Tatanka. What's the latest, bro? Well, I would like to suggest that everybody in listening to us anywhere in Southern California at least go online and become a member of KPFK, a voting member for twenty five dollars. Now, there's someone out there. They can definitely afford $130. That would give you two $65 books <laughs> from Harvey Wasserman, The People's Spiral History of the United States, an amazing tome that in, in, incorporates indigenous history. It's with great humor, the typical Harvey style, wonderful illustrations. And I would suggest the other copy that person send to Oliver Stone. There you go. I, I think he needs good. it. What <laughs> an idea. You know, uh, Howard Zinn said, 
Harvey Wasserman constantly provokes us and educates us, sometimes outrages us, often inspires us. He is always delightfully readable. Well, tonight, today, hopefully we're delightfully listenable. I will, uh, 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 Tatanka, uh, a salesman that you are, I'm glad you offered a double order. If people want to do a double order, go from 65 to 130 and get two memberships to KPFK. And you can get two copies of my People's Spiral of U.S. History, which I will send you by PDF, and we will then become pen pals, and I will certainly correspond with you personally. But I have and another book. I'll tell, go ahead, Amaya. Well, I'm just going to tell our listeners that it's really easy to pick up that book by going to kpfk.org and prominently on the website in the, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a... Uh, a tab to <clears throat> to to select to get you to the uh, donation page, right? And uh, uh, but those of you who want to, want two books and will want to put up sixty five t- twice, I will send you a book that uh, some people don't like me to talk about. It's called the uh, the gay pot smoking, our gay pot smoking founders, and the and their amazing psychedelic adventures. It it uh, this it gives you the truth about George Washington's life as a gay pot-smoking Buddhist. I know you haven't read that in your history book, so well, we can talk about that further when you get in touch with me. But listen, all you 5G people, we have a, a major movement we're plugging into tonight, thanks to Julie Levine, one of our very favorite activists. Um, uh, the 5G network is incredibly important, and uh, we. I hope that every 5G activist will take heed and at least join KPFK. I mean, we do have the ability to offer something no other radio network offers, which is a voting membership, for God's sakes. I mean, I'm a voting member of Greenpeace uh, because I went to work for them in 1991. It's really great. And here we have an election coming up at at, uh, KPFK Pacifica. And if you put in your 25 bucks, you will get to vote. And uh, as a result of the last election, we wound up with a great president, who would a chair who would be a great president of the United States, Tatanka Bricka, and we have Milo Reason on and me on the Pacifica National Board. So if you want to join Pacifica and vote, please do. 25 bucks, 65 bucks gets you a PDF of my book. So let's go now. I do want to um, jump ahead here. We've done our I do want to thank Oliver Stone, by the way, for putting in his me and his pro nuclear movie. Every every activist. Uh, in America has always wanted to be in an Oliver Stone movie. <laughs> and he did it for me. So thank you for that, Oliver. Now let's go debate. debate, And let's also now talk about 5G. Sidney Cox and Brenda Martinez, you have uh, a very powerful and important event coming up on 5G in Los Angeles. This is, I think, next Tuesday. It is something yes. we're asking people in Los Angeles to go out and do. This is a decision about to be made that you can directly impact. So uh, Sydney and and Brenda, and uh, I think Brenda, you've been with us before. Yes. Uh, you're, you're from um, um, uh, in, in LA and uh, we're pushing activism in your neighborhood before and now here we are again. So both of you uh, jump ahead please and tell us what's going on and what our listeners can actually do. Well, thank you so much, Harvey. Thank you, uh, everybody, for for being here. It's always such an honor and so much fun to be here in your program. Uh, So we're here. uh, Sydney is with us. We are, as you mentioned, this is related to the 5G infrastructure, but it's mainly a decision that was made back in 2023 by the Board of Supervisors that affects the whole L.A. County. And so what uh, they decided was to approve uh, amendments to two ordinances that are wireless facility ordinances. These ordinances, basically, one of them removes all the rights uh, to public involvement. Uh, no notification if they're going to place a cell tower or antenna near your home, your school, your place of worship uh, in a public right away. There's no notification. There is no hearing and there is absolutely no appeal. Uh, the number two, uh, the 22 uh, removes all um, California Environmental uh, Quality Act and also the historical protections. So um, 
So the uh, Board of Supervisors pulled a really fast one on us. Uh, we uh, organized, 11 groups organized, among the Mothers of East LA, uh, the Kitoa Band, uh, Fiber First LA, uh, Children's Health Defense, and we uh, launched a lawsuit. And so March 12th, next week, next Tuesday, it's very important, 9.30 a.m., Stanley Mosque uh, Courthouse, in, uh, located in 111 North Hill Street. Uh, we will be there. We will have a press conference. The attorneys will be going in there, fight for us, come out and give us a verdict. So uh, it is very important that people show up because the judge is practically, and the Board of Supervisors has been practically saying, people don't need to be notified. We don't need public comment. We don't need any of this public involvement. Um, so we need people in the courtroom, you know, orderly, but we need people in the courtroom. So I'm going to pass it on to Sydney. Um, Sydney, if you want to say something? Well, when I first heard about what was going on in L.A., now I don't live in L.A. I have family there and I have a lot of friends there. But when I first heard about this, I thought, wait a minute, they can't do that. That that that, that can't be. Um, they must have just made some mistake that they voted for this. They must not have understood it. Well, um, they do understand it. And somehow the, the wireless industry is all powerful, the all powerful genie that we can't put back in the bottle. And they um, they have such influence over, I hate to say, but they have influence over just about everything in our country and it's getting worse. And so what's gonna happen in Los Angeles is gonna spread. In other words, if they take away all environmental review, CEQA, California Environmental Quality Act has been on the books for a long time. If they take that away, if they take away public input, appeal, they can put a tower up in front of somebody's house and no one could say anything. And the problem is there are more and more people who are getting very allergic to the wireless infrastructure. It's making people sick. And you have a whole a kind of an underground thing going on where people can no longer live in their homes. There are like refugees. They are Wi-Fi refugees. Yeah. Um, and, and, it's, and it's terribly sad. It's heartbreaking. And, yes. uh, and, and you can imagine, you know, you're feeling fine. And then all of a sudden you start getting so sick and you don't know why. And you're getting sicker and sicker. That's going to oh happen. God. And, and, and it's shocking that it's, this is going to happen in Los Angeles. We see it happening in other places. So um, Los Angeles is is ground zero for this fight right now. Yeah, it, exactly. But um, we have to reiterate that this is for the whole L.A. County. So it's not just the city of L.A. It's not just one city. This is going to spread into the whole L.A. County. And and again, this infrastructure, Harvey, you've been following this. You've been following the 5G this is an infrastructure that, uh, first of all, is a, it's a, it's a fire hazard. It's a hazard. So it's a health hazard. It's making people sick. There is uh, plenty of proof of that. They just don't want to listen to that. So it's making people sick. It's making the animals sick. It's affecting our whole ecosystem. And we're just pushing this military uh, infrastructure into the streets, into the, the schools, and so we just, if we don't stand now and come and say, hey, you cannot do that, there is very little that can be done, you know? So we need to wake up, we need to, you know, support, and we need to be there. Boy, this is mind boggling. You know, the, the, the fact that they can, the idea that they can ram this into our neighborhoods, and there are so many people that have an allergy to 5G. And I'm sure more people are having health problems from 5G that don't know about it, as opposed yes. to, those, to those who do know about it. I mean, you two, you know about it. I know Camilla Reese, one of our great supporters, knows about it. I'm sure there are thousands and thousands of people in L.A., all over the country, who are having health problems that they cannot figure out that are stemming from 5G. And, and it's completely avoidable. It is infuriating. Uh, Maya, please. Well, y indeed. I, I just want to remind people that um, this rally is going to be uh, Tuesday, 
morning, March 12th. So make sure that you've set your clocks back because it's starting at 11, 9.30 a.m. Thank which you, Mila. Will, Which will be something like, it'll, but it'll feel like 8.30 a.m. <laughs> yes. so, um, so get up early and go down to the Stanley Mosque Courthouse at 111 North Hill Street in downtown Los Angeles. This is so important. This is your op opportunity to be heard. And, you know, it just blows my mind, Sydney and, and Bredna, that this is one more instance where the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, is being ignored. It's mm -hmm. been ignored time after time after time with respect to the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant yes. and all sorts of other projects. It's just really outrageous that that back in 1970, this uh the state legislature here in California and this this the uh governmental you know it was signed into law that uh Californians would be protected and yet once again this important legislation the California Environmental Quality Act is being ignored yes. it's outrageous and mine was right if the if CEQA and we all know that the CEQA California Environmental Quality Act was signed by a radical environmentalist named Ronald <laughs> Reagan, for right. God's sakes. And and now all these so-called Democrats are turning around and ignoring it. I mean, it's outrageous. Tatanka? Yeah. Um, several years ago, I was part of a group in Santa Cruz, California, that brought testimony uh, from people who were refugees of their own homes from 4G. And we managed, you know, to get a local law passed that you have to let people know about 4G. But 5G is being run over the whole world. You two can probably, what I remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that 5G, the wavelength, I mean, this is what we use that makes makes things faster, makes it more convenient, you know, uh, with videos, et cetera. So you've got the whole the whole telecommunications, the whole communications of the world piling on with this. And but the, the wavelength of 5G is something like the wavelength of an average insect. And they intend to cover every square meter of Earth with this signal, which means the end of the insect world, which means the end of us. Yet one more way that we're going to become the 12th extinction. Can you talk about the the dangers of this to not just the insects, well, and the insects and all of us? Yeah, it's it, you are absolutely right. There are millimeter waves. They're called millimeter waves, um, and they're so small that they travel shorter distances. So they can't travel farther away like they used to with a 4G. Um, that's an electromagnetic field that it creates and it creates radiation frequencies. So the millimeter waves actually uh, need thousands and thousands of antennas so they can communicate with each other. And that's why they're proliferating all of this. And that's why they're pushing it. And that's why they don't care if you have a right or not, if they remove it, if they remove environmental protections, they really don't care. They cared about making the money. They cared about providing the fastest thing. And that's the only thing that the 5G does, my, by the way, it just makes things faster. It doesn't, you know, like 4G was like able to, you, you're able to play videos now, but no, with this is just making things faster. And, and it's, at the expense of what? Of people, animals, ecosystem. We're destroying everything, everything that passes the, the, the path of this wavelength um, is going to be destroyed. So um, it, there, it's affecting, we have now what's called the pre, uh, precision engineering. We have the precision agriculture and it's all related to the 5G, the 6G, the, all this antenna. So I'm just going to let Cindy say something. Oh, yes. I want to mention um, when you're talking about the federal bills, we have this postcard here that we sent out to every single senator, everything. They can't see this, of course, on the radio, but it's um, stop the government takeover of a wire of wireless deployment. There's a bill HR three five five seven. Would you repeat that? Wait, what's the what's the bill again? It's HR three five five seven, and it's going to take away. It's 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 a very powerful bill. It's going to um, sort of do what they're happening in LA County over the whole country. It's going to take away everything. It's it's sort of the wish list of the wireless industry. They put it all in this one bill. However, 
it's if HR 3557 doesn't pass, they've taken it apart and they've put little pieces of it in lots of other bills. So there's over 50 bills, including the precision ag bill that Brenda mentioned, that is going to uh, the um, farmers think, oh, we have to we have to get up to speed with what's going on. So so they'll um, sign on to this wireless on their on their property, put tags on their cows. Um, you know, it'll, it'll tell them how much, you know, when they're going to be lactating. I don't know what all, but it's quite alarming. I mean, I don't want to overwhelm people because this sounds overwhelming. We need them to come on March 12th. <laughs> but but well, there's a lot going on. <laughs> Myra, did you want to jump in? We should give yeah. people, let, let me remind people where this is KPFK, uh, California Solartopia, where 90.7 FM. Our number is 818-585-5735. 818-985-KPFK. You can call in our magnificent engineer, D'Angelo Jones, is waiting to take your calls. Uh, we love it when people call in. This is about wireless deployment in L.A. without public consent. And these, these wonderful activists um, uh, uh, who are uh, Brenda and, and Sydney. Sydney, by the way, you, you have the same name as my father, which is... <laughs> A <laughs> great thing. So, um, you know, this is something you can do about. This is the only nobody but KPFK is going to give you the opportunity to talk to activists to tr- that you can turn around and have an impact. This is all of L.A. County. They're going to stick us with us. And, and and it can't happen. We we have friends. Our, our good friend, Julie Levine, had to move out of Topanga, for God's sakes, because you know, it's a health issue. So let's take this real seriously. Uh, Tataka, then Myla? Yeah, oh. isn't this the same delivery system as smart meters? Uh, yes, it's very similar. Uh-huh. But because the thing is... I, I, have, I have heard so many testimonies of cancer clusters around, around smart meters. Yeah. So it's dangerous stuff. Oh, yes, 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 absolutely. It's very similar. They're actually worse because you're right there, literally living so next to the radiation that you're, you you know, with people got sick. Uh, a lot of the people that's getting sick is from the smart meters or living close to a cell tower or an, an antenna. But yeah, it's very similar. This will also Antarctica. be great for the for big pharma because no one will know where it's coming from. And they'll get to, di- you know, diagnose, misdiagnose all kinds of stuff and give you more meds. And I have to give you my I have to give you my input. I'm sorry. I have to give you my input on lower income communities and communities that are already impacted environmentally. They won't even know where it came from. You know, it's just that, that sad. It's just that sad. We're like guinea pigs. Yeah. And Brenda, that's just what I was going to bring up, actually. Um, I, I wanted to talk about how um, we don't have fiber optics, which is an alternative in underserved communities. And uh, and I also want to say that we have a caller who took up uh, Harvey's uh, offer to call in. So shall we take that call? And, and yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. let's let's do it. Thank right. you, Myla. Hey, caller. Stay with us, please, uh, Sydney and, and Brenda. Uh, go ahead, caller. Mr. Wasserman, how you doing? I called you last month. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, the Moberg situation and all that and Gloria CIA and uh, blah, blah, blah. I was trying to call you the week after, but it was my birthday, but I was knocked out. I was asleep. But um, I have uh, two Oliver Stone newses for you. But before I do, hopefully you're feeling better and stuff like that from your uh, surgery and stuff. So, oh, yeah. Uh, well, I, everybody we didn't know. I, I broke my hip, so I'm sitting here. But uh, I am looking out at the rain in L.A., and I'm – not complaining. And those of you who think it's cold, I grew up in Ohio, so let's, let's say it's chilly. <laughs> but go ahead, G. And we're going to stay with the yeah. 5G, but go ahead. Uh, I'm glad yeah. we're glad to hear from you. What's happening? Yeah, I was going to call last week, but you had too many guests on, and I was going to also say rest in peace to Richard uh, Lewis, comedian. Not so much his friend, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, that's uh, uh, or Toby Keith, that are uh, supporting this genocide in every war that comes out. But anyway, uh, what's it called? Um, so uh, Sunday morning, two weeks ago, I'm asleep, uh, and I missed the first, time, the first part of the show, but I caught the end of the second show, uh, European supremacist, Zionist, uh, Art Bell's Coast to Coast AM. So I caught it at 5.57 AM uh, when the uh, host, Richard Sarrett, another warmonger, was saying, I'll see you March 8th. 
uh, unfortunately, also some of your colleagues over there, Donna Walker and um, Terry Lisa Gar, work for Coast to Coast. Unfortunately, I don't like that. But anyway, um, the Richard Sarrett said, "I'll see you guys March 8th." Later on, I checked what day it was. It was Friday. Uh, which is two days from now, when my guest will be Oliver Stone. And immediately, 5.57 a.m., laying in bed, I thought about Mr. Sluggo Wasserman, and I said, I got to try to call in last week, but I mean, I was going to, but you had guests on, so I'm happy you took the caller. Plus, um, it didn't occur to me the past month or so when you've been talking about it, or even before that, it just popped in my head about two weeks ago. He didn't just start selling out now. A few years ago, I was listening to Coast. I used to listen, listen religiously. I used to be part of the Coast to Coast family. Not anymore because it's just warmonger and all that stuff with George Norrie. Um, so I was listening, and he had a, George Norrie had a guest on, and he said, tell Oliver Stone with a golly gee, you know, conversation. Oh, gosh, gosh darn it. Tell Oliver Stone he thinks I'm Illuminati. He doesn't want to come on my show. So I was like, all right. You know, at least somebody didn't sell out. But then, like, a year later, I find out his son is coming on Coast to Coast. And then I was like, okay, maybe they have a breakup in the family. The son doesn't get along with Oliver Stone. But then it turns out that Oliver Stone later on went on the show Coast to Coast. So he didn't just start selling out recently. He, he's been selling out for a while. So just wanted to tell you about that. So anyway, he's going to be on Coast to Coast tomorrow, evidently from what Richard Sarris said, Friday night. Uh, I think usually Friday nights, two hours, the, the last two hours are open line. So from 10 to 12, he should be on. So, you know, if you want to, I don't know if you can get through and, uh, you know, challenge him directly and call him on it. I don't know if he'll be talking about, you know, uh, nuclear and all that. But uh, And then props to you for calling him out and not just keeping it left wing and not going the liberal route like Tom Hartman and them. Uh, because you called him out, you called the governor out and all that stuff. So props to you. and all Well, that thank stuff. you, man. Hey, it's good to hear from you, G. And, and uh, we'll continue to take your calls. And, uh, yeah, and join nice. these good folks at their neighborhood demonstration on 5G. So, so tell us, Sydney and, uh, and uh, Martinez, Brenda Martinez, uh, Sydney Cox, Brenda, Brenda Martinez, where is your demonstration? What can people do? And can G come there and, and meet you guys? Well, Brenda, you take that away because she's the one that's going to be the boots on the ground. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it's March 12th, next Tuesday, 930 in the morning. It's right in front of the Stanley Mosque Courthouse, uh, downtown L.A. The address is 111 North Hill Street. It's in, the, in between Temple Street and First Street. Uh, we're going to be out there. We're going to have a press uh, conference with the attorneys. They uh, will be there. Some of the uh, plaintiffs will be there. Uh, we will have uh, one of the best attorneys uh, in the telecom, which is uh, Scott McCullough. He will be there. He will be joining us. He's directing this case. And, uh, well, show up. Uh, we have science. We have food. We got everything there. So you just have to show up. Well, uh, what's your, give us your website so people yes. can be in touch with you regularly. And your yes, phone so um, so you can uh, you can go to Fiber First LA, uh, F I B E R, F I R S T L A dot org, and uh, that's the organization. One of the plaintiffs, and my number is three two three three four seven eleven forty two. If you have questions, so once again, it's three two three three four seven eleven. 42 you can text uh to that number send us a message if you have questions the the court is literally next to the grand park so we're planning to wait for the verdict and people are more than welcome to bring chairs uh picnic baskets and spend some time in the on the grand park while we wait uh we definitely want this to be orderly and some people are allowed to go into the court yes myla oh yeah i j i just wanted thank you so much Brenda and Aunt Sydney. It's wonderful having you here. I just wanted to tell listeners that they're listening to you on KPFK 90.7 FM in Los Angeles uh, on the California Solar Topia show. And we're still in Fun Drive. And I think we're going to go to a musical break. And I'm hoping that you'll stick with us. Don't go away. Yeah, and Brenda and Sydney, stay with us if you like. Yes, and we'll so continue absolutely. This, uh, 5G, you. very important 5G discussion outrageous what they're doing you know um uh, to our our airwaves and our safety uh, without you know even even telling us it's, and it's I, ridiculous 
And when we come back, we've got a call from Camilla Reese. Yes. And uh, can I just say one last thing to your listeners? This is the only place, KPFK is the only place where we can actually talk freely about the real issues. Mm. Everywhere else you go, you can't even say the word Verizon or telecommunications because right away they'll shut you down. So thank you so much, Harvey. And thank you, Mylene Tanka, for everything that you guys are doing and for keeping up KPFK. Thank you so much. Well, it's great to have you. Just give me the warm power Give me the steady flow of a waterfall Give me the spirit of living things As they return to clay Just give me the restless power of the wind Give me the comforting glow of a wood fire But please take all your atomic And no cold, but some may seem go away to take control when it's bought and sold. Now I know that lives are at stake, yours and mine, and our descendants in time. There's so much to gain, so much to Yeah, everybody's got to choose. That's um, that's the great John Hall, former congressman from New York, uh, singing at the Musicians United for Safe Energy concerts in 1979 with the immortal Jackson Brown, uh, an, an Angelino and, um, by birth and uh, still here and a great supporter of KPFK, aside from being a terrific human being uh, and a magnificent musician. Uh, um, we're going to be joined by Camilla Reese, uh, a great expert in this issue. Myla, did you want to jump back in? I'm just so pleased to hear from Camilla. Well, uh, D'Angelo, who's running the show here, uh, has been taking our phone calls. And Camilla Reese uh, is one of the great experts in, um, in 5G. Camilla, you're a bit of a latecomer. We've been talking about 5G resistance here in L.A., we do have an event coming up on Tuesday that Brenda Martinez is going to be at. There will be food and um, and lots of great stuff to oppose this horrible uh, ram railroading of 5G. We're almost always also joined with Sydney Cox. Camilla, you are in the East, and you have a long history with um, 5G. Can you tell us a bit about the medical evidence of why 5G is so bad, and then you can be joined by Tatanka Bricka, who also knows this issue very well. Sure. Um, so, well, just um, for clarification, it's not just 5G. There's 3G that's still out there and operating. There's 4G. 5G is actually additive to 4G, um, and it's not like it's totally replacing it. There's going to be 6G. All these things, they're just names for generations of the technology. And so what people are particularly concerned about with 5G is that they're um, planning to go up into much higher frequencies, much higher pulsations, much uh, more complex signal characteristics and modulation and um, bio more biological disruption. So this, these, uh, radio frequency, this radio frequency radiation, uh, these frequencies and th that have a power behind them, their power and frequency, and those are the two risks. Well, the third risk is really the duration of exposure. But these are, um, these, this is energy. This is an energy force that it may seem like it's nothing. Uh, you know, if you're in a wireless environment, you don't notice it. But um, your cells perceive it, and they are affected whether you are experiencing symptoms or not. And it's been linked in research in, gosh, you know, I've seen evidence of at least 20,000 studies and um, showing, in fact, a lot of those studies go back to the U.S. government studies, tremendous evidence from U.S. government studies from many ends of the U.S. government, from, 
you know, the Naval Research Institute to the Defense Intelligence Agency to, um, you know, the EPA, the National Toxicology Program at the NIH. I mean, there's so many. I mean, maybe I want to say a dozen different ends of the U.S. government have done research on this in the past before there even was a cell phone industry or antennas, you know, um, spread out over our, our land. Um, they were doing this for military and industrial purposes in, in originally, and that's when that's where the exposure guidelines were developed for those kind of applications, for brief applications, and not to blanket an entire human population. And so we're at the point now where this technology is proliferated, the antennas are proliferating, they're getting closer and closer closer to homes on utility poles. Um, either indoors, outdoors, you know, it's not just your cell phone and, and your router indoors, you've got it in your, your refrigerator and your television and, um, you know, hidden antennas and everything. And, um, and then you've got it outdoors and coming from the satellite. So there, right now there are, people really need to be concerned because right now there are, Congress is considering over 60 bills in both chambers that collectively would promote some very significant additional proliferation of antennas and infrastructure across the country and in space um, from satellites. And so it's, um, it, you know, people, it, it's degrading our biology. It's a degrading our, it's impacting our regulation systems that keep us in balance and, um, you know, on all levels, physical, mental, emotional, and um, so, look, if you look at the chronic illness rates since the early 1990s when this technology started to roll out in, you know, at a high rate, mid, early to mid-90s, um, all these chronic illnesses started going up dramatically um, at that time. And it's really quite shocking when you see the curves. And I'm actually working on a paper on this right now with somebody. And um, it's been linked, this radiation has been linked to all kinds of medical issues, especially neurological conditions have been increasing um, in, in their impacts on, on the immune system, links to brain tumors from um, cancer, from uh, cell phone use, um, all kinds of different um, dysregulation that can lead to anything, whatever a person's vulnerability is. So, wow. Um, it's and scary. you personally, Camilla Reese, have had experience. You just had to move out of your apartment when they... Um, stuck a uh, 5G in the hallway, and um, well, you know Julie Levine, our our very good friend, uh, activist, a great activist, um, has had to flee Topanga. I mean, this is this is not stuff that's kind of abstract, touchy feely. This is hardcore stuff. Tatanka Bricka, do you want to add to what Camilla has been saying? Yeah, for Camilla and Sydney and Brenda, don't don't. Are the lawyers at cities and places still hide behind this 1994 Reagan year act where there was I mean, none of this even really existed. And they hide behind something that is uh, we're not protected at all. There's no protection. Is that right? Well, there's a um, Section 704 of the Telecom Act of 1996, maybe what you're referring to. There was a provision stuck in at the very last minute in the bill signed by Bill Clinton that um, wow. prevented local governments from li um, limiting these antennas on on uh, health or environmental grounds. Um, it actually said environmental grounds, but it's been interpreted in the courts to be mean health as well. So um, it um, you know that's one of the big big problems and it's got to be reversed. And then the other issue, the, the other core issue is that the exposure guidelines um, are based on the false premise that the only form of risk is from the power. And it doesn't consider um, a biological effects from the frequencies that are non-heating frequencies. They just considered the, what the risks are from power, like in a microwave oven, nobody denies that there would be risk. That's very high powered. Um, and in military settings, it would be high powered, you know, um, and industrial settings in the early days. So now we've got this, these frequencies that are not thermal that, um, that our exposure guidelines don't even attempt to protect from. And then also, there's no acknowledgement of the uh, cumulative, the long-term cumulative effects that, um, 
you know, provide another, um, you know, key risk factor, the, you know, the duration of exposure. And now they're everywhere, indoors and out, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. And so these these new bills that are in under consideration in um, Congress is going to completely um, preempt um, local zoning authority on the placement of the antennas, um, exempt most of these deployments from environmental and historic preservation laws, um, encourage the deployment uh, on um, federal land, including in national parks and forests, national forests, and um, um, use federal uh, funding that's been uh, allocated for broadband funds, make it available for wireless deployment. And in fact, on people's wireless bills for years, uh, they've been um, um, charging you for a, you know um, a certain amount on your everyone's bill for uh, broadband for fiber for you know fiber to the premises and um, and instead they've been using that for for wireless and um, um, so that's so then there are also these bills in Congress are also going to um, fast track approvals for the satellite networks there. Oh, you know, maybe 5,000 satellites roughly now, but there are um, like over 100,000 that have been applied for, and the plan is for the, them to beam Wi-Fi from um, space to base Earth stations that then would be connected to the rest of the network here on the, you know, on the Earth. And nobody's really looking at the impact on um, not only on humans but on the ecosystem and on the atmosphere, and um, they're using it now in agriculture. I mean, the, the effects of this radiation on water um, is um, it's very destructive to the innate communications um, in water that is necessary for to support. For energy and for biological stability, and in, in in every context, but in agriculture, they're using more and more wireless in agriculture, and um, you know that's a real concern for the 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 um, the, the the benefit for the of water in crop growing. And well, you know, and water. Uh, Camilla Reese, uh, one of our great um, um, experts, is of course uh, vital to life. Here we are in a county with 10 million people, and they're they're ramming this all over LA County, and with no public input and no public education. I mean, and you know, an expert like you uh, can just put them in their place, but they're not even responding. Brenda Martinez, um, uh, you have this. I want to remind people, by the way, we're at uh, California Solartopia KPFK. Uh, .org, uh, uh, 90.7 Pacifica in Los Angeles. Um, you're listening to a show on uh, uh, 5G that nobody else in L.A. would ever broadcast. So please join uh, and support becoming a voting member. 25 bucks, you can get my book uh, for uh, 65 and actually become my pen pal. But, uh, uh, Brenda, tell us uh, what's coming up here. I mean, uh, you know, Camilla, you should be in touch with she and Julie Levine really know this in- issue inside and out. So what are we doing coming up now? Yes, thank you so much, Camilla. This great, great information. Um, so we're going to be meeting on March 12th at 9.30 a.m. At, right in front of the Stanley uh, Moss Courthouse. And we're going to rally uh, the show that the, the public does scared if their rights are taken away. And uh, we're going to be there. We're going to have a press conference with the attorneys, 9.30 a.m., March 12th, in front of the Stanley, uh, Stanley Moss Courthouse, 111 North Hill Street between Temple and Hill. I'm sorry, and First Street. Um, we're going to be there. Uh, we're going to make our voices be heard. Uh, and I am so thankful that you are uh, jump in, Camilla. Definitely We'll love to continue communication because the Board of Supervisors, before they approved this, they received 16,000 emails and they uh, people were asking them to stop and to consider fiber optics and to uh, figure maybe like other other options and listen to the experts. And they never they just they didn't ha- they didn't they just move and, on. And, forward. And fiber <laughs> optics is there's actually an alternative. You know, when we say no and, nuclear, we have solar. 
When you and say no funding, fee, we have fiber optics, right? Yeah, and there's federal funding too. Yeah, we wrote uh, Sydney and then Myra. Sydney, Sydney has something to say. Well, I just want to say uh, something about the FCC. So the FCC has, has set guidelines, and basically the FCC says if you're exposed for six minutes, if you're in the industry, if you're a professional, or 30 minutes for a regular population. And the problem is they don't go after that. They have six minutes or 30 minutes. And as Camilla said, it's based on, based on thermal heating. And basically, this is the strange thing, is when they did these studies, from what I've heard, I think it was five monkeys and eight rats or something like that. I mean, it was just, it's, in fact, it's almost mind boggling what they based these guidelines on. So the fact that they haven't taken them out towards you know eight hours if you're in a place of business or 24 hours if you're living right next to a, a, a cell tower. And the other thing is that the FCC is also engaged in spectrum auctioning. So they auction off spectrum. Spectrum is what, you know, they put certain spectrums up. And there's also, um, the FCC also allows experimental uh, frequencies. So if, you're, if you want to mess around and figure out, well, what kind of frequency can, can we use? You can, you can actually apply for an experimental license. And, just and they, never, they never do credible studies of human health and that stuff. Um, I want to go, we, we're going to have to wrap here because we want to jump in a little bit on Diablo Canyon. Um, uh, can you and Camilla, can you give us, please, the best websites where people can uh, uh, research these health impacts? Yeah. So first I want to point everybody to a paper that we published. I, I do my work through the National Institute for Science, Law, and Public Policy, and we published a paper um, about two, I don't know how many, a couple years ago, called Reinventing Wires, the Future of Landlines and Networks. And in it, it was authored by Tim Sheckley under my direction, and in it, it describes um, how, why, how we came to champion an inferior technology, wireless, and um, compared to fiber, and it explains the history of it all, how we got to where we are, and what the benefits are for fiber, not just from the health perspective, but from, you know, fiber is 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 faster, it's more secure, it's more energy efficient. I could go on, there are about 13 different um, angles that are described in that report called Reinventing Wires. You can find that on the website for the National Institute for Science, Law, and Public Policy. It's nislapp.dc.org. Uh, um, also, um, um, Children's Health Defense out there in California, they started covering this issue a couple years back. They're doing a terrific job, Keep and they were actually, they've been filing some lawsuits. One is um, consolidated with a lawsuit with the Environmental Health Trust, and the D.C. Circuit Court ruled um, I guess it was in 2021 that the the FCC it told the FCC to go back to the drawing board and explain how they could possibly defend not upgrading their their safety guidelines um, based on the thousands and thousands of studies presented in that case. And they said, you know, how, what about the what about the evidence for risk to children? What about the neurological evidence? What about they said go back and that was two years ago and they have not yet responded. The FCC has not yet responded. In that case, you know, that so, is really important because that's, that's, that's Camilla, that's getting Camilla you and Brenda and Sydney need to be in direct contact and all our listeners give, give our listeners, please, the number one website they should go to for research on this. And we'll go to Myla Tatanka and then we're going to jump into the nuclear issue for the last couple of minutes. Well, I think um, Children's Health Defense is one. Um, I think Environmental Health Trust is fa fabulous. And, okay, um, Children's, Children's uh, Health Defense. American and what's the other one? Technology. They're all terrific resources, those three. Okay, and Brenda, will you be in touch? If you contact us after the show, we'll put you in direct email contact with Camilla, you and Sydney. And uh, this is a great contact to make. Uh, Myla, go ahead then. Yeah, Tonka. you know, um, thank you. Uh, Camilla, what great information. Um, just one more time, because I wasn't quick enough to write it down. That first website that has your paper, it starts N as in Nancy, I as in Institute, S as in 
scientific, I think. And and what's the rest of it? Please say it slowly and clearly so that people can write it down. L-A-P-P dot org. NISLAP dot org. NISLAP DC, sorry, NISLAP DC, like District of Columbia. NISLAP DC dot org. And you'll look for the EMF project. There's also a 5G project there, but I um, our project in that paper is... Um, is a EMF right, so one, one more time, what is the, uh, just spell out the website, please, um, and then we'll, we'll move on. N-I-S-L-A-P-P-D-C dot org. Okay. That's. Um, and the EH Trust is EH Trust dot org. EH Trust stands for environment. Right, all you uh, 5G people out there. This has been as good as we can give you. No one else is going to do this. Please join kpfk.org. 25 bucks, you get a voting membership. 65, you get your book, my book. And um, and you got all three of you. Thank you so very much. Um, uh, I'm sure the food on Tuesday at your event will be great. And it'll be wonderful to meet you both. Camilla, thank you so much. You're really fantastic on this. Amaya, then Tatanka, and then we're almost out of time, guys. So go I, ahead. I, I want to apologize to Fred, who's been holding on to speak, if he's still on the line. Um, All right. And, and we'll encourage him to call in next week. And yeah, because I, I want to I take a shot here. I am so angry at Adam Schiff. Adam Schiff just ran. Everybody knew he was going to get the nomination for um, a, a Democrat for Senate. I've met him. You know, I told him that in his hearings, he should refer to Donald Trump as Fredo, but he had no idea what I was talking about. Uh, you know, from Godfather, who gave me this crazy look. But Adam Schiff, you had no business you know, promoting um, this jerk, uh, Steve, what's his name, the, the, the pitcher. You could have honored Katie Porter and um, and the great Barbara Lee, who is a legendary figure. You have no business running a sne- an $11 million campaign promoting Steve Garvey. And, 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 and meanwhile, you know, Katie Porter is a magnificent uh, activist. Barbara Lee is a legendary, literally legendary figure in U.S. history. You could have honored them in your campaign. Instead, you did the Democratic corporate thing and it was disgusting. So, you know, uh, obviously we don't want Steve Garvey in the U.S. Senate, but you should apologize and, and and also tell Gavin Newsom to stop killing solar energy in the state and start promoting um, uh, renewables and kill Diablo Canyon, for God's sakes. And Milo, I know you have a, a, a contact now for upcoming actions. We really like to promote actions that people can take. So go ahead, Myla, please. Sure. Well, I wanted to talk about this uh, this important petition that was filed um, on March 4th by our wonderful group, uh, the Mothers for Peace, based in San Luis Obispo, who have been the premier fighters to, uh, to um, challenge the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and PG&E in um, extending the the operations at, uh, at at Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. The Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant is decrepit. the The reactors there are embrittled. They pose a danger to the entire state. And actually, if 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 there were to be a meltdown, if the worst were to happen at Diablo, which sits on a nest of earthquake faults. It is a facility that is simply not engineered to withstand the kind of probable quake that could happen. And yet the um, the the state of California, the legislature reversed the decision to shut Diablo. They told the, the PG&E convinced the the state legislators that they would only be extending the life for five years. But they have now, PG&E has now filed a petition with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to extend operations at Diablo for 20 years. 
So they lied. They misrepresented what they were doing. Five years would have been a travesty. 20 years is just uh, an un- suicide. Un- 20 years is suicide, basically. Right. So the, the Mothers for Peace, along with the Environmental Working Group and the Friends of the Earth, have filed a motion to be legal interveners in a hearing, in the hearing, PG&E's hearing, to the NR, the, which is, uh, I'm sorry, let me start again. They want to intervene, and they are requesting a hearing so that they can object to PG&E's application to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission for a 20-year extension of operations at Diablo. Harvey. So we want people to sign up, support MothersForPeace.org. That's one word, M-O-T-H-T-R-S-P-E-A-C-E dot O-R-G, and, and support their activities, and, and, and let's get Diablo shut, for God's sakes. Now, Gavin Newsom has already cost California upwards of 17,000 jobs by sabotaging a renewable energy. It's insane. Uh, we, we just got moments left. The ta- our chairman, Tatanka Bricka, uh, yes, can you uh, give us a couple of Everybody, words? follow up on what, what Myla just said. Go to mothersforpeace.org. Everything is there that she talked about and more. And contact your local representative and ask that woman or man to get in touch with John Laird, our just recently reelected. He, he's a good guy, senator and a state senator, and we're asking him to rewrite to write another bill that will shut down Diablo Canyon. We really need to mount a a vigorous campaign to get that done because I, he wants to do it. I think he needs to be pushed to do it. Okay, and we are pushed for time. Magnificent show, as always, Brenda, Sydney, Camilla, thank you so much. Uh, D'Angelo Jones, you're the greatest, our, our engineer, uh, Myla Reese and Tatanka Bricka. Uh, support uh, this show, please. Just join and you can and you can vote kpfk.org and um uh, we are just thrilled to be able to be on the air no nukes everybody shut the apple canyon stop 5g and let's get to solartopia in california and everywhere we'll see you next week on the california solartopia show this is harvey sluggo wasserman and by then i hope my hip will be healed no nukes take care We needed more The rich got rich The poor got so The fuel ran scarce The price jumped high And so we gave nuclear power a try But don't you know we're gonna have a Please help keep independent journalism.